A drop at a time it is allotted. A drop at a time let me live it. Life is thus. Let me flow. Parched is what I am. Parched let me be. Isn't that what happened yesterday? When I was asleep and you touched me? I saved myself from falling into you, but accidentally stepped on a dream. In those dreams, let me flow. Why don't you talk to someone? Anyone. It doesn't even have to be about what happened. Just, uh, just talk, you know? Talk to mom. That's, that's not enough. What about everyone else? I don't like the way they look at me. With pity. No matter the topic or the conversation, what's happened is always looming in the background. This is the woman who's a little girl, you know. I feel like they judge me to see if, I've, if I'm behaving appropriately. I get very confused in how to behave. Why does it even matter what they think or how do you behave? It matters because when I choose to talk to them, I make them a part of it. When I have a conversation with them, I make them a part of my life. What about Simran? She's your best friend. She'll definitely understand. Don't you want to talk to her? I do, but I'm physically not able to. As if something's really wrong inside and I can't focus long enough to figure out what it is. At the same time, I need everything to be at peace. It's as if I'm afraid to have a confrontation with myself because I don't know if I'll be able to come back from wherever it is. I start to get very anxious when I talk. And who knows if anyone really wants to talk to me. It's a lot to handle, don't you see? Would I feel normal if I took a shower? Would a shower make me feel clean? Who's going to tell me that? Who's going to say, should I, should I get up and wear makeup and get all dressed up? Who's gonna say it's okay and I can go back to the life I had? And, and who's gonna tell me if I should get up off this couch? And where should I go? What should I do with all the time that I have now? I can't seem to figure out what to say to anyone because I don't even know what I'm feeling most of the time. I know I'm rambling and I'm not making any sense, but I can't seem to stop talking. I can't, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just breathe. Just breathe. <laughs> All the time you need, it's okay. Relax. It's okay. My little girl is dead. What? What did you come here to see? A mindless comedy? A shameless retelling of jokes that'll yet again make you forget realities of your life? Well, I hate to disappoint you. Mind you, this isn't about catharsis either. You are not my affordable therapy. This is just a peek. Because I'm not ready to let you in. See, the wound is too fresh. As I clamp down on it, it oozes and it festers. So just glance at it and walk away. I know what you're thinking. That you're gonna leave here feeling good about yourself having lent an empathetic ear to a grieving mother 
and later perhaps you'll talk to your friends about the cruelty of my circumstances. My young age and my obvious state of distress at the forefront of such conversations. But honestly, you're gonna leave here feeling cheated. Because I'm not gonna let you in. I will only show you the small cuts, not the legions that I clamp down on. And I get it. The need to make a connection is as natural as the need to breathe. But the connections that are made in circumstances such as mine are that of pity. And I don't want your pity. Not at all. All I want is to satisfy your curiosity of what a grieving mother looks like, acts like, talks like. Don't lie to yourself. You are curious, morbidly so. She was just eight months old. My little girl is dead. And it's taken me three months to say this out loud. I was thinking, do you want to go somewhere? Go somewhere? I don't know. I haven't thought of anywhere. Maybe somewhere for a week or two. You know, just to, uh, just to get away from things. What things? I just change things up a little bit, you know? It's not a scenery change that's needed. I you know, know that, I right? I know, I know, I know. But I was also thinking that maybe we can... Uh, Take care of the um, the urn. Again, I haven't picked up a place or anything. Maybe, maybe we can pick up a place together. I don't know. How do I even begin to figure okay, out where? Okay, 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 okay. I'm sorry. Okay, forget I said anything. Just we'll talk about it some other time, right? Yeah. Don't worry about it. I don't seem to be doing it right. What's that? Being your wife. I need to do it better. Stop. It's okay. Don't worry about it at all, okay? It's not your fault. You're right. I, it's too early to talk about it and I wasn't thinking. I just said the first thing that came to my mind. I'm, I'm sorry. Really. Please don't go beating yourself over it, okay? What was that? It was Simran. Why didn't you answer it? Because I don't feel like talking to her right now. Oh, you don't feel like talking to anyone. Sorry, that's that's not that's not what I meant. I'm... Look, I just I just think it'll give you something else to talk about. Get your mind off of things. You're Just giving me solutions again. I have told you so many times that I. Yes, I know it's not algebra, but just sitting here and doing nothing is not going to help at all. Who says I need help? I'm a type A personality. I don't leave much to spontaneity. But having kids, it changes that. And people, they don't like to tell you that. Parents, for the most part, they like to pretend to be in control. But the minute you bring that little person home from the hospital, all the control you think you had, poof, it's gone. And if you're really lucky, you get to be like me. 
and get to experience the spontaneity of death very early in life. I never in my wildest dream thought I would be here. And control now is an illusion. I don't even know what I'm feeling most of the time. And people, they try to help. They really do try. They wait patiently in lines at the funeral. And the precious, happy, grammatic seconds that they get with you, they part with some serious wisdom. But here's my embarrassing secret. I don't remember anything. I mean, can you imagine? These people, they took time out of their work. They left their kids at daycare. They, some of them drove hundreds of miles, all the while thinking of some serious advice to give me. And I don't remember a single word. So the social worker from the hospital called, gave me names of some counselors. What counselors? Therapists. Didn't you say I needed to talk to someone? I did, and I still do. But I don't want you to talk to someone who's gonna make you helpless or dependent. We don't, we don't need a pity party, do we? And all they do is they categorize people by depression and anxiety and bipolar and... Yes, they give you the latest breakthrough medicine, but does that really help you? Does that help you make sense of what has happened? Does that, does that heal you? No. All it does is make you dig deeper and deeper into the shit that you're already in. Your healing has to come from inside you, not from outside, don't you think? I don't know. What if life's not about right or wrong? What do you mean? And don't you ever wonder? What if it's not about the black or white? What if it's not about even the gray? What if life is about Spurts of color. Yes, spurts of color. What if it is about moments of brilliance, moments of clarity, moments of realizations, moments of complete sadness or even complete bliss? And all we have to do is gather this complex mosaic of colors, of depth, of complexity, of gravity, of happiness, and, and call it life. Yes. Parts of color. What are you talking about? That doesn't even make any sense. They say childbirth is a miracle. But I wouldn't have known until I witnessed it firsthand. I saw her come out of her mother's womb and I was mesmerized. My first sane memory after everything happened is of someone asking me, and I can't remember who, how I haven't killed myself. A blast of love and life went right through my body, but somehow I was still rooted until I held her in my arms. That was the first time I cried because I was overwhelmed with love and joy and this, this fierce need to protect. I remember driving her back from the hospital cautiously as if she was this, this fragile little thing. At night, I would, I would rock her to sleep. That's because I can't grasp an emotion for too long. Sorrow, anger, guilt, love, hate, none of it. It's all a jumble up here. If I could just hold on to one thing, anything, then maybe I can make sense of it. At night, I would rock her to sleep. She had her favorites. She would just put her tiny little head on my shoulder and, and just listen.
Months later, I drove her back to the hospital, still, still very fragile. Only this time, I had to stand and watch as they poked and poked. So yes, it, it hurts. It hurts a lot. But it does so all the time, so there's nothing wrong with it. That's normal, isn't it? There's no need to quantify the hurt. There's no need to call in the squadron of healers to try and fix it. I just... I just let it run right through me. The hurt, the pain, the anger, the guilt, the confusion, the sorrow, I... I don't hold any of it back. And the logical part of my brain says that nothing can come out of the talking. What justification can anyone give me? And by the way, the standard justifications, I can recite them to you without even blinking an eye. If he has done this, then there must be a reason. This is your cross to bear and you're strong enough to bear it. You were only given a short time with that angel. And last, but certainly not the least, she's in a better place now. Honestly, these justifications, they annoy me. Actually, they really, really piss me off. So why the hell should I bother talking? I value life too much. It would be extremely selfish of me to indulge in my own sorrow just because my situation warrants it. If I can't look past my own despair, that would be insolence on my part. Nope. So what I... What I have to do is, is put our life back together, one block at a time. Don't you call in the... Text came on your phone, I didn't mean to look at it. I don't care. It's from Maya. Yes, she wanted to meet up. For drinks? Yeah. She's gonna be in the area and she wanted to see if we could meet up. Why won't she come home? I didn't think you would want to meet her. Well, you said I should talk to people, right? Really? Unbelievable. What? She's a friend. A girlfriend? Ex. What's going on? What's... Are you serious right now? I won't talk to you about our daughter. Jesus. Answer me. Stop. Stop it. Just stop, okay? What's, what's going on? This is not normal. Will you go to that bar for beer? No, I was going to order one of those strawberry daiquiris with a little umbrella in it. You yeah. know what I mean. Will you go to that fancy bar with the fancy beer? You've told me plenty of stories about it. I haven't it. decided yet. I read the thread on your phone. You do talk to her about it. I talk to anyone who wants to talk about it. I don't need to hide. That's not fair. That's not what I meant. Sorry. I talk because talking is my catharsis, okay? But what I don't understand is this sudden attitude towards Maya. You've known her for so long. You've hung out with her. She was at our wedding, for God's sake. And she's never mattered enough to come in between us, so why now? And I talk to her just like I talk to her all the time, like a friend. Well, you wouldn't need to talk to her if I stopped flipping out every time you try to talk to me. I would still talk to her. But the words and the thoughts that I share with you come from a special space and I do not share that space with anyone. No. I think you're jealous. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not jealous. Listen, do you really need more on your plate right now? I'm, I'm okay. I don't feel uncared for. And yes, Talking helps, but I don't think I need that to connect with you right now. 
We'll talk someday, I promise. I know it's hard for you. I, I know that. In the meantime, just... Just hold on. Okay? Just grab on to something, even if it's a faint echo of what we used to be like. Take all the time you need and... All I ask is that, in the meantime, please, don't get lost on me. And when you come out on the other side, we'll talk. I promise. In the meantime, I'll keep pretending that you're jealous because I quite like that idea. Hey, How do you know that I'll make it on the other end? Because I'll be there waiting for you. <laughs> what? Was it too, too Bollywood? Yes. Didn't like it? No, it was a bit much. Okay, listen. You know the whole concept of soulmates? In life, there are husband and wife, partners, who complement and supplement each other and, and, and go through this, this emotional roller coaster that we call life together. And yes, the ride that we were just on was the scariest and darkest of all, but you know what? Not a lot of people would have made it who connect so deeply that we practically pull on each other. So there is no question that you won't make it. You should just quit your job and... Listen to me when I say that it's okay to smile. Hell, it's, it's okay to laugh. That's just life pulling at you and, and, and bringing you along with it. It's not asking you to stop grieving. It's not asking you to try to make sense of it. It's definitely not asking you to forget about it. Stop worrying. Stop thinking and just flow with it. Man, all that talk of beer. Do you want to go out for a drink? Sure. Give me a minute. You have laid out the clouds. My naked feet still have the ground beneath. To have you, yet to wish for you. Perhaps this is why life is so beautiful. In that wish, let me flow. Parched is what I am. Parched is how I want to be. In the haziness of the fog, perhaps I've reached the sky. Your sight as my guide, look how far I have reached. In the fog, let me flow.